In this video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step beginner tutorial on how to use the Bing X crypto exchange. If you're looking to learn how to trade futures on Bing X, I made a separate tutorial for that, and I'll leave a link for that video in the description down below for anyone that might find that helpful. In this video, I'll show you how to buy in Google Authenticator, where to go if you want to buy some crypto using fiat, and how to deposit some assets onto the Bing X platform from another exchange or wallet address. Then I'll take you into the spot market and I'll break down the user interface. From there, I'll show you how to buy and sell crypto using market orders, limit orders, and how to set up a stop loss. All of that and more with some tips and tricks along the way. If this is your first time signing up on Bing X, I left a link for you in the description of this video as well as in the pinned comment down below. Bing X is often running promotions for people who are signing up for the first time. These can be deposit bonuses, giveaways, mystery boxes, and more. You'll also be supporting my channel at no extra cost to you. So if you think I did a good job of this tutorial, feel free to use that link when signing up to support my work and be eligible for the current Bing X sign up promotion, whatever that might be by the time you're watching this video. This video is not financial advice and is for educational purposes only. Always do your own research before ever putting any of your money on an exchange. I've also left you some timestamps in the description down below, so at any point feel free to skip ahead to a section that might be most relevant to you. Aside from that, don't forget to leave me a like and hit subscribe for future content. Let's get into the video. Once you sign up and sign into Bing X, don't forget to visit your rewards page. Remember, if you use my link when signing up, you're going to be eligible for some additional bonuses and rewards. So to get to that page, just come right up here where it says new user rewards and give it a click. And on this page here is where you can find your new user rewards. You'll see a little mystery box up at the top here, and right here you can see deposit to receive up to 5,000 USDT. The more you deposit, the more you can receive. If you want to learn more about the rules, just click on this little blue link right here that says rules. If you scroll down the page a little bit further, here's where you'll find some deposit and trading gifts. And these are little tasks that you can complete on the platform to unlock some USDT bonuses. So be sure to come over to your bonus page here and claim some bonuses. At the time of recording this video, KYC is not necessary to create an account on Bing X. However, a lot of exchanges have been switching over to KYC lately. So I'm going to show you where to go to get verified just in case it becomes necessary by the time you're watching this video. To get verified on Bing X and complete KYC, you just come right up here to the top right hand side of the screen, hover over your profile icon, and from this drop down menu, click right here where it says identity verification. And here's where you can go through the KYC process and verify your identity. During this process, you will have to upload a government issued document, such as an ID card, passport, or driver's license. You can take a photo of that document or you can scan the document. Whenever I'm doing KYC, I just normally use my driver's license. So just start out by selecting the country that issued the document from this drop down menu right here, and then choose the document that you wish to use for the verification process by simply clicking on it. Then Bing X will give you some simple instructions to follow and you'll have to upload your document right here. If you wish to do this on your phone, you can click right here on continue on phone. Once you upload the document, just simply click on next to move to the next step. So for anyone that needs to get verified, now is a good time to pause this video, get verified, and I'll see you on the next step in this tutorial. After creating your account, it's always a good idea to add an extra layer of security such as Google Authenticator. If you don't already have the Google Authenticator app, you can get it for free over here on the Google Play Store, and you can also download it off the Apple App Store. Simply navigate to one of these platforms from your phone and download and install the Google Authenticator app. You can bind Bing X by simply coming right up here to your profile icon, and from this drop down menu, click right here where it says Account and Security. On this page here, come right down here to Security Center, and here's where you'll find Google Verification. Simply come over here on the right hand side and click where it says link. On this page here, you can download the Google Authenticator app by simply scanning one of these QR codes. For iOS, you can scan the one on the left and for Android, you can scan the one on the right. Once you download and install the app, just simply click right here on next. On this page here, you can proceed to bind Bing X to your Google Authenticator app. So to do that, open Google Authenticator up on your phone and at the bottom right hand side inside the Google Authenticator app, tap on that plus sign. Then you'll see two options, scan a QR code or enter a setup key. The easiest way is to scan a QR code. So tap on scan a QR code, then hold your phone up to your screen and scan your QR code. 
If the camera is broken on your phone and you can't scan the QR code, you can use the option to enter a setup key. So you just tap on enter a setup key, then tap where it says account name and name your account. And then below that, tap where it says your key and enter your key code, which is located just below your QR code on your screen. Also write that key code down and keep it somewhere safe. You can use that code to recover your account if your phone ever gets lost, stolen, or broken. You just don't want anybody else getting their hands on that code, so make sure to store that somewhere safe. Once you enter in your account details, you just simply tap on Add to bind Bing X to your Authenticator app. Once you've scanned your QR code or entered your setup key, simply click on Next. On this page here, you'll have to enter in an email verification code. If Bing X hasn't sent your code right away, you can request it by clicking over here on the right hand side. Once that email arrives, enter in your six digit verification code, and then down here you'll have to enter in your Google verification code found within your Google Authenticator app. Once you type both of those in, just simply click right here on submit. And you're all done. You've bound Bing X to your Google Authenticator app. And if you come down here to Security Center, you can see next to Google verification that it's now set. If at any point you want to remove it, you just come over here and you click on remove to start that process. If you wish to buy crypto using fiat, you can find all your fiat purchasing options if you come right up here and hover over buy crypto. Then you'll get a drop down menu with the available options to purchase crypto using fiat. For fast and accessible transactions, you just give this one a click right here at the top. And that'll bring you over to an order form on this page here. Make sure to read their important tips as you move through this process very carefully. And if you agree with everything, you'd click right here. I have read and agree. And then you'd click on OK. Then in this form right here, choose the fiat currency you wish to spend by clicking right here and then selecting it from this drop down menu. Then you'd type in the amount you wish to spend. So for example, we could do something like this. And then we can come down here, click where it says USDT, and then you can select a crypto that you wish to purchase. At the time of recording, that's Tether, Bitcoin, or Ethereum. Perhaps by the time you're watching this video, there could be more options there. Once you have that set up the way that you want it, you just click right here on buy. Then that'll bring you over to this page here where you can select a payment method. And these are third party service providers. Keep in mind with some of these third party service providers, you'll have to complete KYC with their platform before being able to proceed with this transaction. Also pay attention to the fees. Sometimes the fees can be quite high with third party service providers, although some of them seem to be getting a little bit better. For example, you can see right here with MoonPay, in this particular situation, I'd be receiving 99.1 Tether for my $100 spend, so that's not too bad. But you can take a look through all of these and see which one's giving you the best bang for your buck. But whenever using a third party service provider, make sure you do your research on that company and always pay attention to the fees. If you want to proceed with one of those, you just click on buy over here to proceed to the next steps. If you want to do a bank transfer, you can also do that through a third party service provider by coming up here where it says buy crypto and then coming down here and clicking on bank deposit. Then you'd select the currency that you wish to spend by clicking right here and selecting it from this drop down menu. And always make sure to read through all of Bing X's prompts right here. So if you wanted to proceed, you'd check this box right here and then you'd click on verify now to move to the next steps. If you choose to purchase some crypto using fiat, you'll be able to find it once it arrives on the platform if you come right up here to this little wallet icon and then click on my assets from the drop down menu. This will bring you over to your assets overview and you'll find the assets in your fund account by clicking on it. To deposit some crypto onto the Bing X platform from another exchange or from a wallet address, just simply come up here to the top right hand side of the screen to this little icon here and then click on deposit in this drop down menu. And this will bring you over to the cryptocurrency deposit form. If this is your first time visiting this page, you'll likely get this little pop up window here where Bing X is prompting you to read the deposit and withdrawal users guide. So certainly give that a read through. I'm going to go ahead and check this box right here and I'm going to click on confirm. You can select the crypto that you wish to deposit by clicking on this box right here. And then you'll get a drop down menu displaying the available cryptocurrencies that you can deposit onto the platform. Alternatively, you can search for it in the search bar right here. So I'll go ahead and do Ethereum. Once you find the coin that you're looking for, just simply click on it. Next, we'll need to select a network by clicking on this box right here. Then you'll get a drop down menu with the available networks that you can use for the crypto that you wish to transfer onto the Bing X platform from another exchange or from another wallet address. 
And some of these networks will be less in fees than others. But the main thing is you want to make sure that the network matches on both sides of this. You don't want to send from one network into another network or you risk losing your coins forever. So the big thing to know here is make sure the network matches. For this demonstration, I'll use the Arbitrum 1 network. Now that I have the coin selected as well as the network, I can click on this box right here to get my deposit address for Ethereum over the Arbitrum 1 network. So we'll give this a click. And now BingX has generated my deposit address for Ethereum using the Arbitrum 1 network, which is behind this little box right here. And to keep this demonstration nice and simple, I'll go ahead and send some Ethereum over from Coinbase onto the BingX platform. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy my deposit address by clicking on this little icon right here. If you're sending in from a smartphone, you can hover over this little icon here, you'll get a QR code and you can scan that code using your phone. But in this demonstration, I'll be using that deposit address behind that black box. And now I'll bring Coinbase into frame. And from here, I'm going to come up here top right hand side and click on send and receive. And then I'm going to choose the asset right here by giving Bitcoin a click. And I'll go ahead and select Ethereum. Now I'm going to paste my Bing X Ethereum deposit address in this box right here. And I just have a tiny bit of Ethereum here, so I'll go ahead and click on send all and I'll click on continue. And before I send this over, I need to choose the correct network and I can see the network box right here. So I'm going to give this a click and I'm going to be selecting the Arbitrum network. Now the network matches on both sides of this. So now that I've selected the correct coin, the correct network, I'm ready to click on send now. And now the coins are on their way. So I'm going to bring Bing X back into frame here. And a quick tip with this, if this is your first time sending crypto onto the Bing X platform, just send a small amount first. Once that small amount arrives on the platform, you can have the confidence that you have everything set up correctly, and then you can deposit a larger amount. Once your deposit arrives, you can find it by coming over here on the left hand side and click on my assets. And this will bring you to an overview of your account details. And as you can see, the funds arrived in the funding account. So I'll just go ahead and give that a click. And right here up at the top, is the Ethereum that I sent over from Coinbase. Alternatively, you can get to this page by coming right up here to this little icon top right hand side and you can click on my assets from the drop down menu. And once again, this will bring you back to your overview where you can see all your accounts down below. Now that I have some funds on account, I'm going to take you into the spot market, show you the different market types and pairings, and then I'll get you familiar with the user interface. So to get into the spot market, we'll come right up here at the top of the screen, hover over spot, then we'll click right here on spot. And this will bring you into the spot market user interface. You can find your different market types and pairings right up here, top left hand side and give this a click. So in my case, where it says BTC USDT. Then you'll get a drop down menu with the different pairings and market types. You'll find your market types up at the top and all your pairings down below. You can see in my case here that I'm currently set to USDT. That means all these pairings displayed down below are quoted in Tether. So if I want to buy a coin using these pairings, I'll need Tether to make the purchase. And if I sold a coin using these pairings, I'd receive Tether for the sale. If I was to click up here on USDC market type, now that means all the pairings down below are quoted in USDC. So if I sold a coin using these pairings, I'd be receiving USDC for the sale. And if I bought a coin using these pairings, I'd need USDC to make the purchase. Simply click on the market type and the pairing that you wish to trade. So I'll go ahead and click here on USDT and I'll come down here and I'll click on ETH versus Tether. And as you can see, I just changed the pairing to ETH versus Tether. As easy as that. If you'd like to add any pairings to your favorites, you can do so by just simply clicking on the pairing again. You'll get your drop down menu and you'll notice there's a little star beside each of these pairings. If you just simply highlight the star, you can add this to your favorites list. Let's add ETH, we'll add BTC, and let's go ahead and add XRP as well. Now I'll go ahead and close this out. And as you can see up at the top, I've added those pairings to my favorites. So now if I want to change the pairing, I just simply click on the pairing I wish to trade. So if we want Bitcoin, we'll give that a click. And as you can see, we just changed the pairing to Bitcoin. If I want to get it back to Ethereum, we'll just go ahead and click on ETH USDT. And now we're back to Ethereum. If at any point you want to get rid of those, just come back up here. We'll click right here on the pairing and just unhighlight the star next to the pairing that you wish to take off your favorites list, just like so. Now, when I close this out, you'll see up at the top that I have no favorite pairings. As simple as that. Right here, we have the price action chart. 
This is showing us the asset's performance over a selected time frame. You'll be able to find your time frames right up here at the top left hand side of the chart. And as you can see, in my case here, I'm currently set to a four hour chart. This means that each one of these candlesticks represents four hours of time. If you want to change the time frame, just click on the time frame you wish to view. So let's go ahead and click on the one day. Now we've switched this over to a daily chart. This means that each one of these candlesticks now represents a day of time. You can find additional time frames if you click on this little triangle right here. You'll get this little pop up where you can find additional time frames. You can also add time frames to your favorite or you can remove them as well. For example, let's add a 30 minute time frame to our favorites here by highlighting the star next to 30 minutes. And now you can see up at the top here that I've added the 30 minute time frame. If you want to get rid of any of these, just uncheck the star next to the time frame you wish to remove. So if I uncheck 30 minutes, you can see I just removed that from my favorite time frames. This chart is powered by TradingView, so you're going to have access to some drawing tools as well as some basic indicators from TradingView. You'll find your drawing tools over here on the left hand side of the chart and next to each tool is a tiny little arrow. If you give that a click, it'll expand into a drop down menu where you'll find additional drawing tools. You can also build a little tab of your favorite drawing tools by simply highlighting the star next to the tool you wish to add. So let's go ahead and add a trend line here. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add a horizontal down here. We'll highlight the star. Let's go ahead and do a Fibonacci retracement like so. I'll go ahead and add a brush. I'll be using that later in this tutorial. And let's go ahead and add a rectangle just like so. Now I'll close this out. And as you can see, I built a little tab of some of my favorite drawing tools. And we can drag this anywhere on the chart that we want it. If you'd like to add a drawing tool to the chart, it's as simple as clicking on the drawing tool you wish to add. So let's go ahead and click on the horizontal here. Now we'll come over here to the chart. We'll line up our crosshairs where we might want that and then we'll left click again. Now, as you can see, I just added a horizontal to the chart, as easy as that. If I wanna move it, I can hover over the horizontal line, hold down left click, and then we can drag it around. So if we wanna drag it up like so, we can do something like this. If I wanna get rid of it, I can hit this little trash icon in this tab right here, or I can right click on it, come down here, and click on remove, as easy as that. So certainly take some time, play around with the different drawing tools and get to know how each one of them works. If you'd like to add an indicator to the chart, just come right up here at the top. You'll see this little icon here. Give it a click. Then you'll get a pop-up window with some basic indicators. You can just left click on any indicator that you'd like to add to the chart. You can also search for one in the search bar. So for example, if we wanted an RSI, I could type in RSI. Now we'll click on the relative strength index. I'll close this tab. And as you can see, I just added the RSI to the bottom of the chart. If at any point I want to get rid of it, I'd come over here and click on this little X. As you can see, I just removed the relative strength index. Another thing that I like to do is change the appearance of the chart. And to do that, right click on the chart, then come down here and click on settings. Then you'll get a pop-up window where you can play around with the appearance of your chart. For the most part, I like to just change some things around here in appearance. I like to get rid of the vertical grid lines as well as the horizontal grid lines, as they're really not serving much of a purpose in my trading style. So to do that, I'll click on these little boxes here. So I'll click the one next to vertical grid lines and I'll drag the opacity down to zero, just like so. Now I'll do the horizontals like this. And then I like to make the background color a little bit darker. So I'm gonna come up here and click this little box next to solid. And then from the color palette, I'll click on the darkest color like so. And as you can see, I just adjusted the appearance of the chart. So certainly come on in here, play around with things and adjust it the way that you like it. If at any point you want to restore the default settings, just come down here where it says template, give it a click and then click right here on apply defaults. And as you can see, I just restored the chart back to its default settings. So I'm going to go ahead and just adjust this again and retrace my steps here. We'll get rid of these horizontal lines and we'll click on the solid here and go to a darker color and click on OK. When it comes to charting and technical analysis, I prefer to use TradingView directly, and I'll quickly bring it into frame. Here on TradingView, you're going to have access to way more indicators, more data, different asset classes, you can backtest strategies. There's just so much more that you can do with TradingView directly. And I mentioned TradingView in all of my exchange tutorials because you can use TradingView for free. The free version does have some pop-up advertisements that can be a little bit distracting, but aside from that, it works perfectly fine. The version of TradingView that I'm using is a paid version, so if at any point you want to try one of their paid plans, you can do that for free for up to 30 days. Then you can make an informed decision if TradingView is a good fit for you or not. 
So I'll leave a link for TradingView in the description of this video as well as in the pinned comment down below. I also have a step-by-step -step beginner tutorial on how to set up and use TradingView. So I'll leave a link for that video in the description down below for anyone that might find that helpful. Right here next to the chart is where you'll find the order book. And the order book is showing you where market participants have placed their buy orders as well as their sell orders. And they're doing that by using limit orders. And I'll be demonstrating limit orders in this tutorial. On the top side of the order book in red, we have what's known as the asks. These are the price points that market participants have placed their sell orders. Down here in green, we have what's known as the bids. These are the price points that market participants have placed their buy orders. Right here in the middle of the order book, we have what's known as the mid price. So all the asks up above will be greater than the mid price, and all the bids down below in green will be less than the mid price. When a trader comes along and executes a market order, they're matched up with the best available price from the order book, and then the trade is executed and viewable in the trades tab. You can find the trades tab right here next to the order book, just give it a click. And here's where you can see trades being executed in real time. All the sells are coming in in red, and all the buys are coming in in green. In the price column, you can see the price point that the successful trade was executed at. In the amount column, you can see the size of the trade that was executed. And under time, you can see the time that the trade successfully was executed at. When the market gets really volatile, this panel becomes quite active. To get back to the order book, you just simply click right here on order book. And right next to the order book is where you'll find your order panel, where you can buy and sell crypto using market orders, limit orders, and you can set up take profits and stop losses. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate some of these. First, I'll demonstrate a market order. And these order types are nice and simple. They'll execute immediately at the best available price off of the order book. So the first thing we need to do is configure the order panel. So we'll come right up here and we'll click where it says market. The next thing we need to do is choose if we're going to be a buyer or a seller. So you can see I'm currently set to buy, but if you're going to be a seller, you'd click right here on sell. I'll demonstrate first as a buyer. So now that I have the order panel configured, I simply need to choose how much I wish to spend on the asset. And I can come down to this box right here and type in a custom amount. And if you come right down here, you'll be able to see your available balance. So you'll know exactly what you're working with. So if I wanted to spend 10 tether, I just type it in like this. And alternatively, you can use this slider bar right here. So if I slid this up to say 51%, that would spend 51% of my available balance on this asset. If I slid it up to 100%, that would spend 100% of my available balance. Once you have this set up the way that you want it, you just simply come down here and you click on buy. Then you'll get a little order confirmation pop-up window. So confirm that the details are what you intended. And if they are, just simply click on confirm. And as you can see, I just bought some Ethereum for the best available price off of the order book immediately. If you want to use a market order to sell, you just come back to your order panel, make sure it's set to market, then click on sell. Then choose how much you wish to sell. So I'll just go ahead and use this slider bar right here. And we'll bring this up to 50%. And then I'll go ahead and just click on sell ETH. Then you'll get your pop-up window again, confirm it's what you intended, then click on confirm. And as you can see, I just immediately sold Ethereum for the best available price off of the order book. So as you can see, a market order is nice and simple to place, but usually you'll pay a higher fee for using a market order. And this is because you're removing liquidity off of the order book versus adding to the order book by placing a limit order. And typically exchanges like to incentivize traders to add liquidity to their order book by charging a smaller fee for limit orders versus market orders. And I'll cover fees towards the end of this tutorial. Now I'll demonstrate some limit orders. So the first thing we need to do is come up to our order panel and we'll click on limit. Then we need to choose if we're going to be a buyer or a seller. So I'll demonstrate as a buyer first by clicking right here on buy. A limit order will allow you to be a little bit more strategic by choosing a price point that you wish to be a buyer or a price point that you wish to be a seller. But you will need the price of the asset to reach your order price before your order fills and executes. For example, let's head on over here to the chart and for the purposes of demonstration, let's imagine that I want to be a buyer of Ethereum if the price of Ethereum came down somewhere around this level right here. So what I'll do is I'll grab a horizontal here out of this tab and I'll go ahead and mark a spot out in the chart, maybe somewhere on these candle bodies right there. Now I can see a price point correlated to that horizontal on the Y axis of the chart coming in at 1,824. And perhaps I want to place an order to buy Ethereum 
if the price of Ethereum comes down to that price point. So we'll come over here to the order panel and I'll type that into price. We'll go 1,824. Next, I need to choose how much of the asset I wish to purchase if the price of Ethereum was to come down to my order price. And I can do that by typing in a custom amount of the asset I wish to purchase in this box here, or I can come down to the amount box and choose how much I wish to spend on the asset. And you'll be able to see your available balance right down below here. So you'll know exactly what you're working with. So in my case here, if I wanted to do 10 tether, I could do something like that. And alternatively, you can just use this slider bar right here. For this demonstration, I'll just slide this up to 100%. And then once you have the order set up the way that you want it, you come down here and click on buy. Then you'll get an order confirmation pop-up window. So confirm the details are what you intended. So in my case here, if the price of the asset was to come down to 1,824, I'd be purchasing this much Ethereum, which would be worth this much in tether. If everything's what you intended, you just come down here and you'd click on confirm. Now I've placed that limit order onto the order book to buy Ethereum. And if we come up here to the chart, we can actually see that order inside this little green box right here. So if the price of Ethereum was to roll over and come down to my order price, this order is going to fill and I'll be buying some Ethereum. I can find the details of my order if I come right down here and click on open orders. And then down below is where you'll find the details of your limit order. If at any point you want to cancel this and take it off of the order book, just come over here underneath operation and click on cancel. Then you'll get this little confirmation window here. And in my case, I'll just click on confirm. And as you can see, I just took that order off of the order book to buy Ethereum at 1,824. As easy as that. Now I'll demonstrate a limit order as a seller. So we'll come back up here to the order panel. We'll make sure we're set to limit. And this time I'm going to click right here on sell. The next step is to choose a price point that I wish to sell Ethereum at. So let's come on over here to the chart and let's just imagine that I want to sell my Ethereum if the price of Ethereum comes up somewhere around the top side of this price action right here. So once again, I'll grab a horizontal here out of this little tab and I'll go ahead and mark a spot out in the chart, maybe something like this. Now I can see a price point correlated to that horizontal on the Y axis of the chart coming in at 1,886. And for the purposes of demonstration, maybe I want to place an order to sell my Ethereum up at that price point. So we'll come back over here to the order panel and I'll type that into price. We'll go 1,886. Next, I need to choose the amount of the asset I wish to sell if my sell price gets hit. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and use this slider bar here and I'll bring it up to 100%. Once you have the order set up the way that you want it, you just come down here and click on sell. Then you'll get your order confirmation pop-up window. So confirm the details are what you intended. And if they are, just simply click on confirm. Now I've placed that limit order to sell my Ethereum on the order book at the price of 1,886. And if we come up to the chart, we can see that inside this little red box right here. So if the price of Ethereum was to come up and hit my order price at 1,886, I'll be selling my Ethereum. I can find the details of that order down here. If you click on open orders, this is where you'll find your limit order to sell. If at any point you want to cancel it, just come over here under operation and click on cancel. And of course, I'll click on confirm. And just like that, I've removed that order off of the order book. If you cancel your limit order and you come back up to the chart and you can still see the box on the chart, like in my case right here, just simply refresh the page. And as you can see, that box is now gone. So as you can see, limit orders give you the ability to be a little bit more strategic when placing your buy orders and your sell orders. And usually you'll pay less in fees for using limit orders. And once again, that's because you're providing liquidity to the order book. So in other words, you're a market maker versus removing liquidity by executing market orders. But you do need price action to cooperate. So in our buying scenario, maybe the price of Ethereum doesn't come down to my order price. Maybe Ethereum just moves to the upside from here. And of course I'd miss out on that because my order down below never filled. Or maybe price action rolls over, comes down, fills my buy order, but then price just continues to the downside. And that would put me at a loss. In the selling scenario, maybe price action begins to work its way up, but doesn't quite reach the order price before rolling over. Of course I wouldn't sell my Ethereum because my order up here never filled. Or maybe price action comes up, fills the order to sell, but then just continues to the upside. And of course I'd miss out on all that profit. So a couple basic considerations when choosing if a limit order is an appropriate idea for you, but that's how you can place a limit order.
Now I'll show you how you can set a stop loss. So the first thing we need to do is come up here to the order panel. We'll toggle from buy over to sell. Then we'll come down and we'll click right here on TPSL. Next, we need to choose a trigger price. This is going to be a price point that triggers Bing X to sell our coins. So let's come on over here to the chart and let's just imagine that I want to set a stop loss somewhere just below this wick right here. So what I'll do is I'll grab a horizontal and I'll mark an area on the chart somewhere just below that wick, maybe something like this. Now I can see a price point correlating to that horizontal on the Y axis of the chart coming in at 1,815. So I'll come back up here to the order panel and I'll type that into trigger price. We'll go 1,815. Now I need to choose how much of the asset I wish to sell if that price point gets hit. And for this demonstration, I'll just go ahead and use this slider bar and I'll bring this all the way up to 100%. And you can see right here that it says buy market price. So this means my coins will sell for the best available price off of the order book if my trigger price at 1,815 gets hit. So once you have this set up the way that you want it, you just come down here and click on sell. Then you'll get an order confirmation pop-up window, confirm that the details are what you intended. And if they are, you'd come down here and click on confirm. Now I've set that stop loss. And if we come over here to the chart, we can see it right here in this red box. So if the price of Ethereum was to roll over and come down and hit my stop loss price at 1,815, my Ethereum is going to sell at the best available price off of the order book. I can find the details of that order if I come right down here and click on open orders. And here's where you'll find the details of your stop loss. If at any point you want to cancel your stop loss, just come over here under operation and click on cancel and click on confirm. And I just removed that stop loss. If we come back up here to the chart and you still see this red box on your chart, but you've canceled your stop loss, just simply refresh the page. And as you can see, it's gone. As easy as that. To find the trading fees, what we'll do is we'll come up here and we'll click on the Bing X logo. And this will bring us back to the home page. From here, we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and we'll come over here underneath service. You'll find trading fees right here. Just give that a click. And this will bring you over to the fee schedule. You'll see that there's spot fees, feature fees, and you'll find your deposit and withdraw fees right here. And down below is where you'll find the fees. So you can see at the time of recording, the maker fee is not 0.1% and the taker fee is not 0.1%. So for now, these are the same. So a maker fee is if you're placing limit orders and a taker fee is if you're placing market orders. And you can see in some cases, the fees change depending on the asset that you're trading. So if we come down here and we look at SHIB versus USDT, you can see the maker fee is not 0.05% and the taker fee is not 0.1%. And these fees can change. They could be different by the time you're watching this video. So I would suggest heading on over here to the fees page and just see what the current fees are at. And there you have it, your introduction to the Bing X Crypto Exchange. If you got some value out of that, don't forget to leave me a like and hit subscribe for future content. Also, feel free to check out my other Bing X tutorials, which I've put together in a playlist on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for coming by and checking out this video. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. And until I do, have yourself a powerful day. Bye.